Hi everyone, and welcome back to Macaroon. Transparent squishies are quite rare in the DIY community, but they look pretty amazing if done correctly. In this video, I'll show you all the basics for making clear squishies, including an in-depth look at the different kits that you can use. The first one is Hitohata gel, which is a two-part resin liquid, which you might remember from my previous tutorial. The second one is a crafting toy from Japan called Puni gel. Puni Puni means squishy in Japanese, so I'm really curious to see whether this is actually the same thing as Hitohata gel. I don't think this is sold in shops outside Japan, but I was able to order these on Amazon pretty easily. So the first step is to make a polymer clay model of your squishy design. Since the final piece is going to be transparent, I decided to make a small octopus design, loosely inspired by my Halloween gummy bear video from two years ago. Start by rolling a small piece of polymer clay into a ball. You don't want to make your squishy too big, because Hitohata gel is very expensive and it fails easily, so it's much safer to work with smaller designs. For the next step, make a snake and cut it into 8 equal pieces. Then sculpt these into oval shapes, about the size of a tic-tac. Arrange these around the ball so they look like the arms of an octopus. You might have to play around a bit to make sure that all 8 pieces are evenly spaced out. Take a toothpick and smooth all the edges together. Polymer clay sticks fairly well to itself, but I always prefer going over the edges again just to make sure they're neat, especially for a design like this where there are lots of small gaps and cracks. Next up, I'm going to make a few tiny hearts. Roll out some balls of pink or red polymer clay and flatten them slightly. Then use a pin or craft knife to cut out a slice from the side like this. Rub it gently between your fingers to make the edges around the cut rounder and pinch the opposite side to make it sharper. Now simply bake all your pieces according to packet instructions. For Fimo clay, this is going to be 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your pieces have been baked, it's time to make a mold and I'm going to be using a two-part silicone mold maker. Mix equal amounts together and create a ball slightly larger than your piece. Then press it downwards using one smooth motion and push the size of the mold inwards. Be sure to hold your piece in place with your other hand like I'm doing here and gently apply pressure from all sides. This prevents it from moving around which can produce small air bubbles that mess up your mold. Luckily, this one turned out great on my first attempt. If you're planning on using Hitohada gel to make squishies, then I strongly recommend making more than one mold. You'll probably need several attempts before getting a perfect squishy, so making more at once saves you a lot of time and stress. I went ahead and made four molds since I also want to use one for the Puni gel. The next step is completely optional, but since I wanted to have a heart inside my octopus, I thought of all kinds of methods to keep it suspended inside the liquid. The easiest one is to hold it in place using a pin and then remove this once the Hitohada gel has cured. To do this, take some sticky tape or washi tape and insert the tip of the pin through it. Then I'm using a tiny bit of water-based glue to attach the heart into the pin. I basically only want to use just enough glue to keep the heart in place, but it still needs to detach easily from the pin after the squishy has cured. Now let's move on to Hitohada gel, which consists of a base resin and a hardener. If you've watched my first two videos, then you'll know that this mixture is notoriously difficult to get right. The transparent version is a tiny bit better since the ratio is 50-50, which makes it a bit easier to measure. But even so, you have to use kitchen scales to make sure that everything is correct to the nearest gram. I definitely recommend wearing gloves for this, because the resin can irritate your skin and it's very easy to spill. I started by measuring 10 grams of the base and I added 10 grams of hardener on top. Then mix both liquids together thoroughly. 
Even though both of these are transparent, you can actually see quite a difference in texture, similar to mixing clear PVA glue with water. So keep stirring until you don't see any swirly bits inside the solution and everything looks nice and smooth. Now pour the gel into the mold, taking care not to overfill it, which can happen very quickly with small molds like this. Then I'm simply attaching the pin to the top, checking that the heart is positioned near the center. I use the rest of the gel to fill up two more molds and then I'm going to leave everything to cure. Officially, Hitohara gel is supposed to cure in 24 hours, but from experience, this can take several days. In the meantime, let's take a look at Puni gel. There are very few videos about this in English, and I found out about it from Nerdy Crafter, so be sure to check out the tutorial on her channel as well. This is basically a toy that lets you make charms and jewelry which are transparent and squishy afterwards. The Puni gel comes in packets like this, with two different compartments that you have to mix together. This looks extremely similar to resin, however since resin isn't actually suitable for children, I'm kind of surprised how they managed to include this into a toy. So let's compare both of these squishy gels to see if they're really made from the same thing. There are actually English instructions on here as well, which tell you to mix the gel back and forth 50 times. At first I had quite a lot of problems squeezing the compartment open, but eventually it worked. This one contains glitter on one side, which is quite useful since that lets you see how well mixed everything is. Squeezing this back and forth is quite therapeutic, it's almost like a squishy in itself. Once everything is completely mixed, cut off this corner and fill the gel into your mold. Right away, I noticed that this is a lot thicker than Hitohara gel and it almost has a glue-like consistency. It's also easier to spread around or correct mistakes using a tool. Just to be safe, I'm also filling up a few of the designs from the mold that came with the Puni gel kit. Then I'm leaving everything to cure, which should happen overnight. When I checked on these the next day, I immediately realized that something wasn't right. The Puni gel is completely stuck inside the mold and basically impossible to remove. This can only mean one thing, which is that Puni gel is not resin, but actually silicone. Since the mold is also made from two-part silicone, this is the only material which can possibly stick to itself. This also explains why the mold that comes in the Puni gel kit is made from plastic, something which I should have thought about earlier on. I was pleased to find out the actual material inside Puni gel, but annoyed that this squishy failed completely. So I'm going to try again, but this time I'm making the mold using Oyumaru. This is a thermoelastic plastic, so there's no chance the silicone Puni gel can stick to it. Simply fill the mug with boiling water and drop the pieces inside for a few minutes. This will soften the plastic so you can mold it into any shape you like. Be very careful not to burn yourself when taking this back out. I'm using the exact same method as for the silicone mold to create an impression of the octopus. The good thing about Oyumaru is that if you mess up, you can always put it back into hot water and try again. This mold actually turned out really well, so I'm going to prepare the Puni gel just like before. I found the mixing part kind of fun the first time round, but I have to agree with Nerdy Crafter that this gets pretty strenuous pretty quickly. This is basically a cute and sparkly way to give yourself repetitive strain injury. After leaving this to cure overnight, I was able to pop it out of the mold without any problems. I'm really happy with the shape, but slightly disappointed that it wasn't as shiny as I'd hoped. The shininess depends entirely on the surface of your mold. Oyumaru has a matte texture, so anything made from this will come out slightly cloudy. 
The mold from the Puni gel kit is shiny plastic, so that's why pieces made on there come out looking a lot nicer. Now you can tidy up the edges using very small scissors or a craft knife. I'm going to add facial features using a mixture of black acrylic paint and white glue. Though please note that most types of paint don't stick well to silicone, so try to avoid rubbing the facial area of your squishy whenever possible. I'm actually using an old eyeliner pen to apply the color, which you can see in more detail in this video here. On the whole, I was quite pleased with how this turned out, although it's not quite as squishy as I would have liked. These are the other pieces I made using the Puni gel mold, and you can see that the texture is more bendy and rubbery rather than squishy. I'm actually fairly certain that Puni gel is exactly the same thing as jelly style Decoden cream. I have a bunch of these here and they even smell almost identical. Both of these have a light peachy scent with a faint rubbery base. I made these bracelets using Jelly Whip for this video last year, and you can see that the dried version has the same look and texture. This also explains why Puni Gel is marketed as a toy, because silicone, including Deco Whip, is quite safe and non-toxic for children. So with that mystery solved, let's check back on the Hitohada Gel. This one took almost a week to cure and it was still a bit too soft, so I would definitely recommend adding a bit more hardener when you're mixing your resin. I think a ratio of 40 to 60 will work much better than 50-50. The method I used with the hardened pin actually worked very well and I was able to detach the pin without any problems. But as you can see, the biggest issue is that the squishy is still too soft. I tried adding the talcum powder that came with the Hitohada gel to make it less sticky, but this just ended up turning everything cloudy. This is such a shame because this squishy was so close to being perfect and it just needed a tiny bit more hardener. I still had one more mold with a plain transparent octopus inside, and this one turned out quite cute. When making these, I would recommend using slightly more hardener and skipping the talcum powder so your squishy stays crystal clear. My final verdict is that Hitohada gel is still the best material for making realistic soft squishies, however you need to be prepared for a lot of trial and error. The gel is also crazy expensive, so you can only work with fairly small designs. Puni gel is fun to make as a one-off project, but it comes with very little silicone for the price of the kit. You can probably get the same results much cheaper by experimenting with Jelly Whip or plain household silicone. So I really hope you enjoyed this DIY and be sure to subscribe to Macaroon and Cute Life Hacks. And please follow me on Instagram under my username Macaroon to see more updates in between videos. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!